morning, God. God, I want a taste of you. I want to feel you in this place, God. I don't want to leave here the same, God. I just pray that you you put a revival in our hearts, God. That you give us a new a desire for you, God. A new hunger, God. A new, a new, um, uh, God, that you just... You just open our ears, God, to hear what you have to say this morning, God. That we dwell on it, God. That it gets in our spirit and that we take it out of these walls, God. That we get excited to be here, God. To worship you. To give you glory and honor, God. God, that I don't come here just to fill myself up, God. I come here, God, to get filled up with you, Jesus. God, that I want to know you more. I want to know you more, God. I want a deeper relationship with you, God. A deeper walk with you, God. And I just want to see what you have for us, God. I give you glory and honor and praise. Come on, in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, 
give me a Holy Ghost party. I said you need a Holy Ghost party. I said you need a Holy Ghost party. Because there ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. Pick it up now. Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. Children's church, real quick. Amen. I love watching these babies worship God. Amen. And that's the best thing you can teach them. The best thing you can teach them is how to worship the Lord. Amen. I was watching the little bitty babies back here with their hands held. I was watching the, 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 uh, Charlotte. Scarlet. Scarlet. Yeah, I knew Scarlet. Scarlet. She was really praising God. She was singing with her hands up. Right? And, and the little baby right here. This little baby right here, I look back and she was standing back there going. Yes. Oh. Right? And you're making more movement than some of you. Right? You got to move. Man, you got to move a little bit. You got to shake it up a little bit. Let God have his way. How many of you feel how many of you filled with the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Four people. Awesome. He's important. Yeah, we're going to talk about that yeah, today a little bit about being filled with the Holy Spirit uh -oh. because, uh -oh. man, that's like having a toolbox with no tools in it, right? Let's welcome Pastor Matt to the platform this morning. Uh, uh, how's everybody doing? I didn't believe that. So how's everybody doing? I'm really blessed. If you guys need an envelope, go ahead and raise your hands. Say we gained an hour, I'm still tired. Because <laughs> you had to get up an hour earlier. Right? Are you, are you with bed an hour later? I'm not sure. But an hour you woke up an hour later. Yeah, I just need to keep it the same. Tractor's got, tractor's got headlights on it now, so the farmers don't need the daylight. <laughs> GPS, they don't even have to drive them no more. Yeah. Right? No, it's the headlights. Uh, I got, a, I got a friend that drives a tractor, he's a farmer, he said he just puts on GPS and just goes back and forth by itself. He just sits in there with the AC going with a hard working farmer. <laughs> oh, it must, must be nice. Oh. Don't be making fun of the farmers on it. Right, yeah. I yeah. know no, they, so they do work hard. There's, there's more to it than just that. Hey, can I uh, ask you guys a question? Yeah. No. You guys, no? <laughs> All right, let me ask everybody about Pat. <laughs> that works for me. Works for you. Does anybody uh, read their word? Yes. yes. Believe in the word? Yes. Believe every word of the word? Yes. yes. Amen. You guys believe in tithing? Yes. Amen. You sure about that? Yes. yes. You know, the tithing uh, is not like offering. It's not free will, right? No. You don't, it's not a free will gift. It's not a gift to the Lord. Tithing is... is Returning to the Lord for right, returning to the Creator for all that He has done, right? For, for provision and His blessing, right? His hand of protection. And when you, you get into tithing, people get you're like, oh, I'll give an offering. I'll give I'll give an offering. I don't care. I'll, but when you talk about what is required of tithing, tithing is required, right? Consistency. It's consistent, being inconsistent, being faithful 100 percent of the time. And people get a little bit. Funny, right? <laughs> you get fun to talk about money. Right, we can talk about we can get here and talk about oh let's we'll give to the Lord, but we want I don't put an amount or a, a thing on but as soon as you put a a tie, ten percent, the Lord wants ten percent of right, the Lord wants ten percent. We return ten percent to the Lord. People are like, Well, why why does the church want my money? Well God the church doesn't want your money. God doesn't want your money, God wants your heart, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See the first fruits, the ten percent right off the top. The first, first of the, you know, we give the Lord to showing God how much we love Him and we trust Him. Amen? Showing God, telling God, look, I know you're the creator, you're the Lord, right? You're the creator of heavens and earth, you, you provide, you're my provider, right? You do everything for me, Lord. I'm going to give you this 10% because I know that you can sustain me off this 90%. Right. Amen? And we have a hard time, a lot of Christians have a hard time grasping that concept. 
But you know we have no problem paying the union our dues to protect our job, right? Come on now. We have no problem paying the insurance to protect us, right? Oh yeah. Huh? Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. I have problems with all of that. Yeah, no, right? <laughs> we pay for that extended warranty on the car, and then they tell us, oh, sorry, that part's not covered. Right? <laughs> I'm just telling you, we, we pay that in the world, right, to feel all warm and fuzzy inside. But when the Lord asks about it, we're like, well, I don't know about that. Right? And I just asked you guys before I started, do you believe every word of the word? And you guys said yes, right? And in that word, he says, if you are a faithful tither, I will put my hand protection. I will rebuke the power of the Lord yes. sake, right? I don't know what more protection you need, right? That's it. Any more protection. I don't need any protection of the world. I need God's protection. I need his covering, amen? I need his blessings, amen? Is he your provider? Yes. You really love him? Yes. Then be a faithful tither. I mean, right? We, we, pay, we pay. If you're in the union, you pay union just to protect your job, to keep your job. You quit taking union dues, that's it. You can't work there no more, right? Huh? Actually, they take it. They, they, they don't give you an option no more. No I was in the union a long time ago, and they gave me, you know, you had to pay it separate. But, but yeah, but I mean, insurance, you have to have health insurance nowadays, right? You get fined for that, too. Right? And sometimes they say, well, sorry, that's not covered in your health insurance. Right? Vehicle insurance. Warranty, right? We pay all that. And then they can get screwed. Right? Ooh, that's a bad word. <laughs>
Not the America that you've known. Not the one you want there may be one that's worse, the country called America, but it will not. And we've seen things decline in such a manner in my, just my lifetime. I used to hear my grandparents and older people, uh, even in church when I was young, and I'd be in church and I'd hear people talk about culture and society. I'm just like, and everything's good, everything's this, and how they were changing and how things were, uh, how, how bad things were getting. And then here we are all these years later, and we can see how things are. And if you're not concerned, because you say, well, I'm going to be out of here. Be concerned for your, your yeah. grandchildren, your children, yeah. your neighbor's children. Be concerned because uh, if we don't leave a legacy that's right. That's right. Hello? Yeah. Amen. You hear me? Yeah. And all you have to, if you want to see a perfect example of socialism in America, go to the Indian Reservation. Yeah. World. All right? World. Anybody ever been there? Yeah. We used to preach on the Indian reservations up in, in, in Washington, and, and uh, you go to the Indian reservation, you'll see a perfect example of socialism, and that's what America will become. If you want to see socialism, go to San Francisco. Let's walk around, all right? And you'll, you'll begin to see an example of it. So uh, I'm not really telling, you know, I'm not saying this or that about politics, but I'm telling you that if, you know, uh, sometimes God places people in places even though they're not godly people. Right. Amen? Yeah. All through the Bible, the Lord established kings and leaders and rulers. They weren't always godly people, right? But uh, according to a prophecy I heard from Ken Clemente before he passed away, that our standing president right now will become a godly person. Yes. In his second term. Amen. Are you listening? That's, what, that's a prophecy. Now, first off, he prophesied that he would become president. And this was in like 2007. Secondly, he prophesied in his second term that he would uh, become a godly praying man. All right, so. Uh, huh? He's already started. I hope so. Yeah, he's converted from a Presbyterian, raised up as a Presbyterian, to a non denominational Christian. Non denominational Christian. Non denominational Christian. All right, well, praise God for that. So, well, I know this. I know that he, I know that uh, Jensen Franklin is really good friends with him. And Paula White. I don't know too much about Paula White except I know she came out from under TDJ. But I do know Jensen Franklin. Yes. All right? And that's the fireball of the country right now. Jensen Franklin is, is, is the, he's God's man of the hour right now, I'm telling you. I, I listen to him all the time. Anybody listen to him? Yes. All right. You should. Yes. He's a powerful man of God. And uh, he's really good friends with my bishop, Bishop Mark Filkey. So I get to hear a lot of stuff. Amen? Amen. So if you get a chance, it's Charles, who, how that? Charlie Kirk. Charlie Kirk, right? And what would happen if there was no America? Charlie Pride. Charlie Pride. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Hey, turn your Bibles with me to the book of Luke chapter 24. Amen. Luke chapter 24. I'm going to begin reading in verse 44. Can you say amen when you get there? Amen. I'm lawful to say anything that might come out of my mouth led by the Holy Spirit at any time. Doesn't mean I know what I'm talking about. It just means the Holy Spirit said it. So, all right. Now I know what I'm talking about. I'm just joking with you. Praise God. All right. Luke 24, verse 44. Here we go. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for what you're establishing in this day. I thank you for your word that is perpetually and always anointed. I thank you, God, that today you are here to change lives, that you are sent your spirit to empower us, to equip us for today and tomorrow, God. I pray, God, and for the rest of the week and for the rest of our lives, God. And I thank you, God, that you are doing a mighty work in each and every individual here, each and every individual that's listening to me today. And I give you the glory and the praise for it in Jesus' name. And somebody said, Amen. Verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. That all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And, the, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise. I send the, I send the promise of my Father upon you. 
But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endowed with power from on high. You may be seated. I hope everyone listening knows that we're just not another, another church or another religious gathering. That, 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 that this church is intentional. Amen? Amen? It's intentional. I don't ever just... And I never had vision for, and I never have. I don't just come to preach a sermon. I'm not here to build a church. Amen. But this ministry has intent. Yes. Amen? Yes. This ministry has always had intent. It is to shape people to their core. Hallelujah. Amen? It is to get down into the nitty-gritty of who you are and to expose you not only to who you are or where you came from, but to who you can be. Yes, Lord. Amen? And what God... Where God is taking you. And that all has to do with us allowing ourselves to be molded and shaped by the Spirit of the, of the Lord, by the Word of God. And over time and years and weeks and even decades, I've seen tremendous, tremendous change. I've seen, I've seen change in so many of y'all's lives. So many of you have came so far. And Beth and I are in our family and the Prayer Valley family is so proud of all of you that have come so far. But let me tell you, it's only the beginning. Right. That God has so much more in store for you. I quote it all the time. The Bible says that I have not seen, nor ear hath heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. And I know we love God. Amen. Come on, we love God here at Prayer Valley. We love God. I know our Prayer Valley family that's listening via internet. I know you love the Lord. And those that are joining with us today, I know you love the Lord. And God has things prepared for you that you can't even fathom. Come on. And if you'll begin to let the Holy Spirit speak in you, mm. you'll begin to find out things that God has prepared for you. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So I hope everyone listening knows that we're not just another religious gathering and we're not just going through the motions of dogma and doctrine, but there's a plan and a purpose yeah. behind everything, precept upon precept, faith to faith, that God is doing here in this work. Not just through me, but through everyone that is making this thing function. Amen? Amen. We have assistant pastors, associates. We have teachers, and we have we have our outreaches. We have men's and women's leaders. We have uh, we have uh, uh, recovery. We have food bank. We have are you here? We have children being taught. We have youth being taught. We have things that are happening all the time around here that keep this thing functioning. We have people cleaning the church and doing the yard work and. Doing the worship and playing the instruments. And are you hearing it? Yeah. We have things going on. It's working the PA system. I mean, working the cameras and working the computers back. There's people that are working the computers right now that you don't even know they're working the computers right now. Yeah. Kristen's back there doing book work right now. Amen. To make this thing function. So it takes a well-oiled work. Yeah. Right? But more than being a well-oiled, it takes the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And it takes the Holy Spirit. So, so we are a church body that is clothed with power. We are clothed with the Holy Spirit. We are clothed with the power of God. The power of God is in our lives. We believe in the power of God. We believe in the functioning power of God. We believe in the equipping power of God. Amen? Amen? What I want to talk to you about is in verse 49. The promise of my Father upon you. And, and, and we believe in the power of the, the promise uh, of the Father upon us, which is what Jesus was referring to in Luke 49. For those of you who don't know, the power of the Holy Spirit is available to everyone who accepts uh, and, and puts their trust in Jesus Christ as their Savior. You have access through the, to the power of the Holy Spirit, through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But if you don't begin to function in the power of the Holy Spirit... You're just like I talked about earlier. You're, you may be a toolbox, but you don't have no tools you use. Amen? Amen. Amen? We have access to the gifts of the Spirit, to the fruit of the Spirit, through the, all right, the power of the Holy Spirit, being led by the Spirit, directed by the Spirit, that the Holy Spirit will intercede for us. <coughs> but if we're not allowing ourselves to be clothed with the Spirit of God, Amen? Then we're falling short. See, unfortunately, many Christians neglect the power of the Holy Spirit because, not, not just because of unbelief, but, you know, I've, I've, I've argued with people about the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the, 
you know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I've argued with people over, well, that's not for today, and that's not for this, and that's not for that, and that's not. And I'm like, you know, I don't like to argue. When I, I don't argue no more. Yeah. Right? Sometimes I put stuff on social media, and people try to start an argument, and I just don't even, I don't even answer. Amen? Amen. I used to. Amen. I used to, when it first came out, I'd post something, I was all like, proud of it. <laughs> yeah. Somebody say something, then I want to fight. Where you live? <laughs> right? I don't even fight no more. I post something, I'm like, this is my opinion, I'm posting it, I like what it says. You don't like it? That's on you. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Those are things that we just learn over time. Well, that's how it is with the Holy Spirit. See, many Christians neglect the power of the Holy Spirit because of unbelief or doubt or fear or shame or confusion. I mean, like, how many people, like, I mean, if you really put yourself in check right now, during the worship, we were really worshiping God. I imagine that there were people that really wanted to break out in some type of extra expressive worship, but they didn't because of shame or inhibitions. They didn't because of, they didn't, you know, I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't know, you know, like, I don't know, yeah, I don't know, right? I mean, I, I ain't got no shame like that. Last night, the kids were having a little party at the house, a little harvest party type thing, and they put on Thriller, Michael Jackson, and I'm out there doing the moonwalk. You know, I, I ain't got no shame. Amen? I ain't holding back for nobody. If I can dance in, out in the, in the moonwalk, I can surely dance in church. Come on now. Are you hearing me? I mean, if I can get excited about... You know, whatever happens on my favorite TV show, I can get excited at church. Yeah. If my favorite song comes on and I can get the beat, I can do it at church. Come on. I can do it for the Lord. Yeah. I mean, in the world, you know, I, I have no shame, man. I, 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 would, I, would, I would, you know, if I'd go out drinking, dancing, partying, whatever, whatever I did in the world, listen, I didn't, I, I didn't stop dancing. I just changed locations. Right. Yeah. Are you hearing me? And that's why it's, it's okay to allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. Yeah. Many times it's because of the lack of trust or the lack of faith. And, and to tell you the truth, a lot of people are not empowered by the Holy Spirit because of pride. Huh. It's really it's because of pride. They're too prideful to let the Holy Spirit just have his way. They're too, I mean, like, it, there has to be people here that are hearing things from God, that are feeling things from God, that are sensitive to things from God, that are being disobedient to God. Amen. 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 And a lot of times it's because of pride. They accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Then they try to live good enough through their own works and strengths and efforts. When they need to allow the Holy Spirit to lead them and guide them and direct them. When they need the Word of God and, and then manifesting in their life on a daily basis. Rather than trying to be good enough and, 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 and make it on their own strength. Right? That was the problem with religion when Jesus came. They were trying to make it on their own strength. And people, let me explain something to you. God wants to take your heart of flesh out and give you a new heart. He wants you to experience the true born again experience. Not just, I'm born again because I said it. No, I'm born again because I live it. These religious leaders, they were doing the right things. They were saying the right things. They were wearing the right things. But they weren't living the right things in their heart. That's right. Amen? They weren't being led by the Spirit of God. Their hearts were still deceitful and desperately wicked. So they were following their hearts. And no matter how much they put into practice their own good works, their righteousness was like a filthy rag. Their righteousness was not righteousness at all. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You can do all the good you want to do, but it's the blood of Jesus that saves you and covers you. Amen. And it's the Holy Spirit that needs to lead you and guide you. We need the Holy Spirit. And we need not fear what the Holy Spirit wants to do in our lives. We need not be afraid. We need not be shamed. That's right. That's right. By the Holy Spirit. Man, I'll tell you what. I'll dance in the mall talking in tongues. I don't care. Amen. I've prayed for people on the side of the road, and, and I've seen people. I, listen, I've, I've actually been in the mall when people were slain in the spirit. I've been with my bishop, uh, Mark Filkey, when we were walking through the Yakima Mall and prayed for some people, and they started getting slain in the spirit. I started being the usher. I'll catch them. I'll catch them. <laughs> Amen. 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 That's it. That's we was yeah. getting a bigger crowd in the mall than we was getting in church. Woo. Are you hearing me? Yes. The Holy Spirit wants to have his way. Oh, hallelujah. That's how God hallelujah. intended us.
us to live. He intended us to live filled with his promise. Do you yes. understand that? Amen. God did not put you here and sacrifice his only begotten son so that you could be here and suffer through life you know, barely getting by her with no direction and no instruction. But he, he said he said himself, Christ said himself, I am going to go away, but I am going to send you. I am going to send you. I am going to send you the Father's promise. Yeah. I'm sending the Father's promise to you. I'm sending the comforter to you. Are you hearing me? I'm sending the Holy Spirit to you. Because I want you to stay right there in Jerusalem and I want you to tarry there until you be endowed with power, dunamis, dunamis power, dynamite, dunamis, dynamite, Greek word for dynamite, until you be endowed with power. Stay up under the shadow of the Almighty until you get endowed with power. When worship's going on, get those hands up and get endowed with power. When you walk in here, be endowed with power. When you leave, when you walk in your house, when you're walking through the streets, it don't matter. Be endowed with power. Yeah. From on high. Don't try to do this on your own. Listen, the devil will rape you and scrape you and drag you across the ground. And yeah. you'll wonder what happened. You'll be on the outside looking in, wondering what went wrong because you tried to do it on your own. You thought you could do it, and God said, not without me, you can't do it. I see people all the time trying to do this and trying to do that and trying to do this, trying to do that. Huh? I said it on Thursday night. I said sometimes a good idea ain't a God idea. That's Amen. right. We need to have God ideas. We need God ideas. Amen? Amen. And, and, and I'll tell you something about a God idea. A God idea don't become your idea. It stays God's idea. You know what? Uh, God told me to do this, and this is, and now, and, and now I'm good. I feel like we should do it this way, and this way, and this way, and this way. And we're going to change that. We're going to do this. And God's like, uh uh. That's why so many things go, go awry. Because everybody starts out with good intentions, huh? But the flesh gets in the way. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen, man, there's so many there's so many churches that have started out with good intentions and money gets in the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So many churches start out with good intentions and prejudice gets in the way. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many visions start out with good intentions, are you hearing me? And people get in the way. Come on now. Uh, circumstances get in the way, and situations arise, and right? You gotta be led by the spirit, man. You can't be doing stuff. You can't just be out there doing because you think you had this man going to feed the hungry with me one time. Right? I told him, I go, man, you got to listen to the Holy Spirit, man. You got to be led by the Spirit of God. Don't you be doing nothing. You just say, you just, we're going to feed people, right? We got, we got preachers that know what they're doing. They're filled with the Holy Ghost. They'll do what they're supposed to. And it's like, right? And, feed, and, and for you people that go out to the streets and stuff, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And so this guy, he's powerless. He's a young Christian. He's a zealot. Hmm. You can respect that, right? Yeah. He's zealous to do the will of the Lord. He goes walking over to these, these gang member dudes where I told him not to go. And he starts preaching to them. Right? And everybody thinks, oh, yeah, he's under the power. And the dude just pulls out his his knife, just starts walking towards him. And if my brother Lee wouldn't have been there, we'd be doing a funeral. But my brother Lee, who's anointed, was anointed and filled with the Holy Spirit, just said, hey, 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 he don't know what he's doing, man. He don't know what he's doing. Y'all just, you know, and they, they knew Lee. They're just like, all right, all right, all right. They was just going to, because, you know, he was over there preaching to them. Get it? Yeah. Or should I say preaching at him? Yeah. How's that? Yeah. yeah. He didn't pay no attention to being led by the Lord. So God promised to send us his help and to empower us with his Holy Spirit. And truthfully, if you would get in your word and start learning about the Holy Spirit, all of your inhibitions and all of your, your ignorance about how the Holy Spirit works would begin to dissipate. And all of the, those things about him would begin to leave. And all of your suppressions that you have about the Holy Spirit would leave. Because I can tell you right now that even, uh, quote unquote, the religious world has tried to make people that are filled with the Spirit look like they're ignorant. Or like they're, that, that's not, you know, that's not real. We got, that's a cult. That's this, that's it. And I'm not talking about certain denominations. I'm talking about being filled with the Spirit. 
led by the Spirit. Prophecy comes from the Spirit. The gifts come from the Spirit. The fruit comes from the Spirit. Are you hearing me? And God said He would send His Spirit. Amen? Jesus said that He... How many of you believe in Jesus? Jesus was baptized with the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? How many of you believe in Jesus? Jesus said, I'm going to send my Holy Spirit, my Father's promise, and He's going to equip you. He's going to endow you. He's going to furnish you. He's going to put some tools in the toolbox. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen. So that you can do what needs to be done. Yeah. You can't draw from an empty vessel, man. Come on. Come on. Are you hearing me? Yeah. You see, I've been dealing with this for a long time, and I'm filled and backed up and surrounded by and used by and equipped by the Holy Spirit. So I can tell you that a lot of people are suppressing God's power in their life. They're suppressing it, and they do it because it's uncomfortable. They do it because the Holy Spirit makes you uncomfortable. All right? It's not, it's not the end thing. It ain't like, you know, well, I, you know, I mean, I don't want to do that right here. You know, all these people, this, that, that, and this. That. I don't want to be, I don't want to get all spiritual, you know. I don't want to get all. Come on. Are you, are you hearing me? Yeah. But you got to. Because we're spiritual beings gotcha. having a natural yes. experience. Yes. We're not natural beings having a spiritual experience. I came from my father. Yeah. I was in his mind before I existed. Yes. Amen? In fact, I understand the concept that they that worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen? There ain't no other way. For anybody that's out there trying to worship God and they're not worshiping God in spirit and in truth, they ain't even worshiping God. Come on. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. That's why we let ourselves... This is why even people that you say, my Christian friends do not understand that. They, they don't understand it because they're not equipped with the tools. They, don't, they have not received the promise. And if, even if they have received the promise, they haven't allowed the promise to manifest. manifest. Come on now. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. So I can tell you that trying to do God's work in your own strength, using your human energy and your human reasoning and your, your own intellect, even in... Even in worship, many here listening to me are not allowing the Holy Spirit place to manifest in your worship. Right? You're not really just like, you're too worried about if somebody, what if I sing off key? Come on. What if they, what, you know, I'm not a very good singer. I don't know the words. As long as the lie. Right? You don't got to know the words. Just make a joyful noise. That's yeah. what yeah. You can just howl like a hound dog. Ah! I hear I hear Pat bark every once in a while. He does. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> hey, 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 hold your dog back, Art. Toss your bone once in a while. Toss your bone once in a while. That's a good idea. I'm going yeah. to <laughs> I'm going to treat no, there ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm yeah. proud of him, man. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yeah, man. I, I love it when people are filled with the Spirit, man. They just let, let, let God have his way. That's it. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? But listen, even in worship, we have to look. All, I mean, especially in worship. So listen, consider the difference. Now, consider this. For those of you, give me, let me give you an analogy. Consider the difference between a four-door sedan that mama goes to the grocery store and daddy goes to the Harbor Freight Tool Store. Or the Harley shop. <laughs> Consider that four-door sedan sitting here, and then a race car set up for power and endurance sitting right next to it. Mm. Right? They both run good. Hello? Amen. They both they both run good. And you know, and Pastor, what I'm, they both serve their purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it matters what's under the hood. Yeah. Come on. Hello? Now you can be the four-door sedan, but if you take what's in the race car and put it in the four-door sedan, yeah. Yeah. changes the way it works. Right. Can you say amen? Yeah. I've seen people do it. Listen, I grew up over in East Side, I know. Right. <laughs> Every car had primer, big wheels in the back, little ones in the front. Went down the line up there. I was one of them. Right? 
have a little old junky car with a big old motor in the, underneath it. I don't even know why. Most of the time they didn't run. <laughs> they both run good, but what's under the hood of the race car makes it more powerful. Okay. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Ah. When you use this terminology about cars, you think, yeah, well, it's way more powerful because it's a race car. You're a race car. That's right. Amen. In the spirit, you have to think like I'm a race car. Right? right. I'm not a broken down Volkswagen. Come on. I'm not a broken down four door Amen. sitting in the back of the yard not doing anything. I'm a race car. Yeah. Amen. You understand? I'm a race car. I'm full of power. Yeah. I'm powerful. You understand? I'm powerful. Yes, Lord. I, I'm, 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 I'm powerful because I have the Holy Spirit inside me. I'm powerful because the Holy Spirit leads me. I'm powerful. Amen. <clears throat> Are you hearing me? Yes. There's power in me. Amen. There's power in me to, 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 to lay hands upon the sick and to cast out demons and to pray the prayer of faith. There's, there's power in me to attain towards the things of God. There's power in me to press forward. There's power in me to rise up. There's power in me to overcome. There's power in me to help you overcome. There's power in me to preach the truth. There's power To allow the fruit to manifest. In the spirit, I'm more influential. In the spirit, I'm more persuasive. In the spirit, I'm more potent. In the spirit, I'm more usable. In the spirit, I'm more fierce. In the spirit, I'm more fearless. In the spirit, I'm more faithful. In the spirit, I'm more displayed. In the spirit... It's more evident who God is. Are you hearing me? You want your family to know who God is? They're going to see God when they see the Spirit in you. Amen. Not because you obey the rules. Right. Not because you speak in King James. <laughs> Thus saith thee, thou thy though. When thy day be thy, thy though. Great. Come on. Man, you better get with me. Listen up. God wants to empower you. Quit waiting on him. Well, when my, when my husband gets empowered, then I will. When my wife, when my wife starts doing this, I will. No, no, God wants to empower you. Amen. God wants to fill you with the Spirit. God wants to baptize you in His Spirit. God wants you to pray. God wants you to go. God wants you to give. God wants you. Are you hearing me? God wants you to allow Him to manifest through you. The difference between those two cars are one's clothed with power from the Holy Spirit and the other one is just relying on listen when the Lord filled me with his spirit he told me you don't have to face life alone That's right. I'm going to be with you You're going to be with, with me? Yes. Yeah, Lord. always. I'll never leave you nor yes. forsake you. Lord. Lord. So in the midst of any type of battle, any type of war, any type of hardship, any type of attack from the devil, I have his presence. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? I can walk into the biggest cult in America. Worship. They can be worshiping Satan and sacrificing people. I can walk in there and I have his presence. Yeah. Are you hearing yeah. me? I can walk into the shooting galleries where the dope fiends are because I have his presence. Are you hearing me? I can walk into a crack house, a whole house, it don't matter. I have his presence. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Not that you should be doing that. Right. <laughs> Especially the whole house. <laughs> yeah, I said it. Pastor said. said it. That's right. That's all right. I don't have to fight my battles alone. Amen. I have his strength, his wisdom, yes. his word. I have. I don't have to depend on my own strength. I have his strength. I don't have to depend on my own riches. I have his riches. I don't have to depend on my own mind. I have his mind. I don't have to, are you hearing me? I don't have to depend on my own health. I have his health. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. This is what it means to be filled with his spirit, to be baptized with the spirit. Ephesians
Ephesians 1 and 19 says, And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his great might? Immeasurable greatness. Man, when God said way back to, to David, I have put a great, excellent spirit in you. Hello? He put an excellent spirit in you. I said he put an excellent spirit in you. Amen. That is himself. Yeah. That's the life that's in you. The same power that raised Jesus from the grave is alive and well in me. Are you understanding that? Yes. Man, we don't have to fear nothing. We don't have to depend. Are you hearing me? The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is alive and well in you. Yes. When you've been baptized with his spirit. Amen. When you've Amen. received his spirit and you're allowing the Holy Spirit to have his way. Romans 8 tells us that, you know, the Holy Spirit will even intercede for us when we don't even know how to be. You ever, don't, you ever just still, I just don't know what to pray. I don't know what to say. I just don't. You know what? They, they, the, the revelation in that is like, I just don't even know what to do. I don't know which way to go. I don't even know what to say. He will direct you. Yes. Back up. You don't have to back up. But just take a stop and just go. Holy Spirit, it's your turn. Your turn. I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been blasting. Now it's your turn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been saying. Now it's your turn. I'm closing, guys. Amen. Listen to me. You need the Holy Spirit in your life, yes. and all you have to do is start yielding to His will. How many people here are filled with the Spirit of God? Yes. All you have to do is start yielding to His will. Come on. Start yielding to His will. Man, healing, deliverance, salvation, prosperity, all of those things are in Christ. All of those things are in the Spirit of the Lord. All of those things are in God's Spirit. There's no doubt. There's no skepticism. There's no entanglement of the world. There's no... Are you hearing me? And all you have to do is, is start yielding and start learning his ways and start letting him have his way. How many of you know how hard it is sometimes to let God have his way? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> My challenge to you is to be confident in the Lord, not in who your mama raised. Hello? Yeah. So that's my challenge to you today. All respect to your mama. Right? But she ain't the one you've got to answer for if you get. Right? If your confidence is in you know, if, if your confidence is in you and, and you're gonna fail, that's just all it is. You need confidence in the Lord. If your confidence is in, in, in the practice of your methodology or your your religion, you're gonna fail. It has to be in the power of God. You gotta let God's promise work in you before He can work in everything else around you. Let God have control. You know what the Bible says about resisting the devil? Resist the devil and he will flee seven ways. Right? You can't even resist the devil without the Holy Spirit. Man, we were conceived of sin. Right? It's the nature of man. The fallen nature of man. And, and you know, there's, there's lots of people that by the world standards are good people. But without the power of the Holy Spirit, amen, see the Holy Spirit's going to help you to accomplish God's will for your life. Amen. And there's, I, I'm going to tell you, this, there's nobody that has a better plan for you. Nobody, have, nobody wants to bless you more. Right? Nobody wants to give to you more. Listen, nobody took stripes upon themselves, was more marred than any man. Nobody gave their only begotten son except him. I don't know about you, but I love you. But I'm not going to give my son for you. 
Now, he loves you. Loved you. And he loves you now. Loves you. So much that he trusts us with being filled with his spirit. God will lead you and direct you and, and, and use you in ways that will bring so much change. My wife, you know, we, we were we got we were in the process of getting divorced and the Lord restored our marriage is thousands of years ago. But uh, <laughs> I remember that we had got involved and got saved and was going to church and I went and yielded to the Holy Spirit and I, I began to uh, I began to dabble in the world. Amen? You know, I began to dabble in the world. And because, uh, you know, I started making money and doing things. Started a business and it started prospering and I was doing good. And, you know, I was making money like I'd never made before. And things were happening. I was, you know, and even though I had given my heart to the Lord and I was in church and all that, I wasn't letting the Holy Spirit direct me and guide me. So the, the flesh was directing me and guiding me, along with help from the enemy directing me, me and guiding me, and started guiding me right back into the life I came out of. Are you hearing me? Come on now. It didn't take long, about, a, about six, seven months of being around. I was, this business I was in, I was getting exposed to people. They were making me off. They knew that I had sold drugs and stuff at one time, so they were making deals with me on jobs. Give me some dope, man. Give me this. Give me that. Pretty soon, I'm like, all right, yeah, I'll do it, man. I'll do it. I'll get you some, whatever. Like, I wanted to be cool. I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to be that. Big. You know what I mean? But I'm, I mean, they, you go to church, right? Yeah, but I, you know, I'm, yeah, yeah, I go to church. I wouldn't let the Holy Spirit. I wouldn't let the Holy Spirit direct me. I, I, and, and after God had restored my marriage, I mean, God had restored our life back to, I mean, everything given me back so much and blessed me so much. And I started dabbling in that world again. And I remember I came home and Beth started accusing me of all that. And she looked me right in the eye. Looked me straight in the eye. She was filled with the Holy Spirit. She looked, she, she looked me right in the eye and she said, devil. She said, devil. We're not going back. He's not going back. Yeah. Devil. He said, Devil, I recognize you. I recognize your plan. I'm filled with this is the Spirit of God speaking to you, Devil. This is the Spirit of the Lord speaking to you. And I'll tell you what, you're not going to have him. You're not going to have him. You are not going to have him. And man, she looked me in the eye and something gripped me power of God gripped me at the same time the devil gripped me with fear. Are you hearing me? The same, everything that could grip me, gripped me and God shook me, man, and I was delivered right there and I've never looked back since. Are you hearing me? We need to possess the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We need the Holy Spirit to possess us. Amen? You want things to change? Put into practice what Pastor Beth did there. Amen? Amen. Quit playing patty cake. Amen. Quit playing house with the devil. Amen? Look him in the eye. And I don't care how... They didn't change for 100 years. I don't care. I, I'll tell you what will happen. They'll either get delivered or the devil will get so mad at you he'll run. Or he'll want to fight. Right? Remember those seven sons of Sheba that were trying to cast out demons? They were sons of priests. They were sons of Pharisees that were going around and they were doing exorcisms all over the place. Exorcisms all over. They were doing it all over the place, man. Until they come across a real devil. Amen? And the Bible says that devil jumped on them. That devil possessed them. And jumped on them. Begin to bite them all over and ripped all their clothes off, all their holy garments. Huh? 
<laughs> begin to rip all their holy garments off of them. <laughs> One of them screams out, Come out in the name of Jesus, who Paul preaches. <laughs> the devil goes, Jesus, I know I'm Paul, I know. Who are you? Who are you? Man? Oh, man. I don't recognize you. Wow. You better have Jesus. You better have the Holy Spirit. Come on. Man. That's what will happen when you start getting serious with the enemy. He's either going to jump on you and bite you, or he's going to run with fear. You better have the Holy Spirit. Let's stand to our feet. Come on. Come on. In the name of Jesus, there is power. 